A very warm welcome back to Globetrotting. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as the channel pushes for 60,000. It does feel like forever and a day ago that the 737 MAX was grounded, and thankfully, might I add. The reality is that during the period we saw it on the ground, so much occurred, from a global pandemic to supply chain issues, geopolitical tensions, and more. But at its very core, the MAX just took quite a long period to actually be fixed, and impacted so many in many different ways largely in an always negative manner. So why did it take so long to fix the Max, and what was the story in a nice condensed format? But firstly, what went wrong? Well, in late 2018, we witnessed a sight no one would have expected prior. I know hindsight is everything, but at the time it came as a shock. 737 MAX going down. A seemingly brand new jet with Lion Air. It was tragic, and the substantial ramifications didn't really feel like they had much weight to them. You may recall initially, a lot of the blame was trying to be pushed on the pilots and the safety record of the airline. So the MAX kept flying, and Boeing ensured the type was saved. It would then all come undone in March 2019 when another brand new MAX went down with Ethiopian Airlines, and you could say the jig was up. While Boeing and the FAA tried for a day or so to reaffirm their stance that the plane was safe, they weren't really fooling anyone. Regulators quickly reacted and grounded the MAX fleet. Some may arguably have done so out of pressure from the public, while others had greater intentions. Investigation revealed that the incidents related to MCAS, a system in which pilots knew little to know nothing about its true purpose, alongside how to handle specific faults. That all came down to sensors and a real lack of a safety net. I could go on for hours, but that's the general gist. The MAX was then grounded, and Boeing faced an uphill battle to restore faith in the public, alongside customers and regulators, to prove that the plane was going to be safe. Significant design tweaks were needed to remedy the previous issues. However, the damning thing was that from all of this, with every passing month, investigations and more comments were emerging, and the situation was somehow becoming increasingly worse for the plane maker, as the full scale of just how many shortcuts they'd taken through the years came to light. One of the biggest focuses was the relationship between the FAA and Boeing, seemingly overlooking fundamental changes being implemented on the MAX. Why? Well, because Boeing needed to get this plane to market as soon as possible to ensure that it could fend off A320neo orders. Yes, that is what sparked Boeing to create the MAX. It was deemed as a cost-effective and quick solution to fend off the emerging NEO from their rival manufacturer. However, many would still argue today that the 737 body didn't have much left to give, and what Boeing stretched out of it for the MAX wasn't realistic. Therein lies the first real problem of why this entire saga took so long, and it's back to the FAA, the key regulator. Time had to be taken to work through every single problem, and believe me, not only were there a multitude of issues prior to the Max Jets going down, but new issues were emerging every single day that were completely derailing any progress that had been made. And with this, it's not as simple as, say, replacing an ink cartridge in a printer like I did a couple of days ago. This involves a major operation, and it was a hard position that all the parties found themselves in. Equally one that was deserved considering what had taken place, though, you have to argue. But such time and patience had to be taken to rectify the wrongs. Also, such importance was placed on getting these planes back in the skies as soon as possible, as Boeing was in a world of hurt, ultimately financially, and by no means, though, was this comparable to the hurt that was experienced by the families and friends of those that were impacted by the two aforementioned incidents, which were Remember, killed well over 300. The arrival of the global pandemic at the beginning of 2020, which was around a year prior to the MAX first being grounded, did also play a role, it must be said. It essentially suspended a lot of the integral work right around the world that we were seeing take place with regulators. People were locked indoors and work simply couldn't progress at maybe the rates that were intended to actually get the plane fixed. 
test flights away, and more. And obviously, not all of this was aided by, again, in the early stages of 2020, further difficulties coming to light. But the pandemic was only a fraction of why the delays occurred, and surely cannot be blamed solely for why it took so long. Another integral part was that of the blame game. Determining who was truly at fault for the major incidents was a lengthy procedure. For the longest period, Boeing and the FAA were hesitant to be open about the incident and therefore we had to see proper investigations. All the while, most began to open their eyes as whistleblowers emerged and we would see many court proceedings follow, whether it be whistleblowers, families seeking damages and compensation, and everything else in between. This really began to highlight the cultural issues that were plaguing the two establishments. Confidence, you could say, had been completely lost. I'd argue that while many would already have said before the turn of the decade that the MAX was a cursed aircraft, by the time we've reached into the 2020s, and as I touched on, more issues were discovered strictly related to the software, the recertification efforts were time and time again put on hold to navigate through these latest issues. Despite the efforts of so many, this plane was genuinely starting to show its true colours if it hadn't already, with issue after issue, some arguing that maybe it was beyond repair. But Airbus persisted, and Boeing eventually was able to get the plane recertified after crucial test flights were taking place, in which executives went aboard the plane to really showcase that they trusted the aircraft. It was a lengthy process, and even when the plane was eventually cleared to fly, there was still some distrust between key regulators, and that's why, yes, the FAA was one of the first, but it must be said that other regulators were a bit more hesitant, and they waited towards the midway point of 2021 to officially approve the MAX in their respective location. And even when this plane was recertified, I've got to say that it's not like confidence was back. And while we saw around three years of recovery efforts, the beginning of this year certainly derailed all of that. There was just a lot involved in that few years, from politics to other aspects I didn't even take a look at that could probably have a whole documentary in itself. The stain on Boeing as a company will be present for, I'd argue, as long as you and I are on this planet. While people will eventually forget, they will never move past, and evidence that we've seen take place in 2024 about the real deep-rooted cultural issues that seemingly were not mended have certainly not helped any healing that may have been taking place. Boeing is once more starting from scratch and can truly be thankful that nothing more serious happened at the beginning of 2024, when a door blowout incident occurred, but all aboard the aircraft were fine. But with so much oversight now, new leadership, production increases banned, millions spent on safety training, a cultural identity change being attempted, Boeing is trying to right its wrongs, seemingly once and for all. And you would argue it's last shot. It'll be interesting to see if they can stick the landing for once as needed. The Max debacle has come, it's also gone. There's no point now continuing to reminisce from an internal perspective of Boeing. They've tried to learn as much as they could and they need to move forward and right those wrongs, be a more positive company and obtain that title once more of being the largest aircraft manufacturer that has been missing for so long. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks a lot for your support. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis here on Globetrotting.